was talking last night to a certain Sadik, and he told me that about Sara, a great difficulty that he was going through, trying for doing great, great Ishtadlis to have children, and the Ishtadlis unfortunately didn't work out. And he said that he felt devastated. And he asked me what he should do. And I thought about it for a minute. The first thing I did was empathize with him very, very much and try to feel his sorrow he was going through and try to express my heartfelt empathy. But after I told him three things, I said, number one, you just can't be stuck in it. It's Hanukkah. We're learning to have great war. This person has so much brach in his life, in so many areas. Hashem has blessed him in so many ways. Focus on all the good things that you have. Focus on all the good things you have. That's number one. Do that for the next seven days. So when you get to the last day of Hanukkah, we'll come back to it. But for one week, just feel the simcha. As the Rambam says, Hanukkah is unique. Simcha v'halel, and they're connected. A person who says halal properly feels the greatest, greatest joy because it helps him focus on all the good things we have. So that's number one. And number two. First of all, as Chazal say, try to put it out of your mind because the Yehid Zahara has a koya, has a power to make a person focus on the negative and then it's very, very hard. And you're stuck. As David HaMelech says, Take me out of the confines of my soul. Or as, the, as he said, What's Meitzer? Meitzer is the, is the narrow boundaries that we place around ourselves. He said, it's exactly the way it has to be. I told him, listen, you did certain uh, tipulim, certain procedures to have a child. It didn't work out. Hashem obviously thought this is not the right time. So what can you do? So I thought very deeply for a little bit. And I told him the following suggestion, which just came to me. I have one a woman who calls me up. Before she asked me, Shaila, she says, He wrote son that Hashem is Baruch should put the right words to Rabbi Chow. Wow, that's such a great tefillah. So... I had a great Seattle Shrine for it. I told him as follows. I said, We know where Israel Salander says in Michtav Dain, the seventh letter in his book Israel, or Israel, that if a person wants to get deeply involved in the mitzvah, he should learn the Allah of that mitzvah. He said, Learn the Allah of Puravu. Make because Hashem wants a person to do the mitzvah. Puravu. It's one of the mitzvahs of the Torah. Where a man is obligated to fulfill. Learn the Allah's approval. And we'll learn it together. We'll do that together. So that was the third thing I told him. And the fourth thing I told him was as follows. And this is very, very difficult. And perhaps in the merit of the great light of Hanukkah that we see here, as the lights of the candle burn behind me in the castle, perhaps we'll be zoyke to accomplish this. As follows. We know that when we have a difficulty, and he told me that right away, we say, What if you just don't feel it's good? He had so much expectation, so much hope, so much money, so much time, so much effort, so many years, and the procedure wasn't sex. I, he just couldn't say, couldn't get the words out of his mouth. So what do you do under such circumstances? He told him his files. You have to think, right? Even if it's not good, I accept it, Hashem, because I love you. Even if it, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. I can't get the words out of my mouth because I just don't feel it's good. I don't feel sincere in saying this is good. Even so, accept it from Hashem because that is ultimately what Hashem wants. Us. Ultimately, Hashem wants that we should accept every single thing we, He does. And we know Hashem's IQ is infinite. Just like we always use the, the analogy of an ant in front of a computer. If there was, there's a little ant walking right now in front of my computer. And the ant's intelligence vis-a-vis the computer 
is greater than my intelligence vis-a-vis the Bari Eilam, who has infinite wisdom. And we accept. Even though I can't say it's good, Hashem, I can't. I don't feel it. I don't take the words out of my mouth. I don't feel, I don't feel that it's um, integrity. I don't feel at ease saying those words. I can't, just can't do it. Even so, accept that it's good. Accept that it's good. Accept that it's from Hashem. And because Hashem wants it, therefore I want it. I say Ritzoinoi, I say Ritzoinoi, Ritzoinoi. Make your Ritzoinoi like his Ritzoinoi. And then you'll see the greatest problem. And this is what we have to do, especially during Hanukkah. On Hanukkah, in the time of Hashemunayim, it looked devastating. It was to, it was seemingly the worst possible situation in Jewish history when there was so much assimilation, siavnim, there were so many people being pulled in by Greek culture. And at that time, they could have, everyone could have just given up and said, you know, take and throw the towel, throw the towel. That's not what happened. Hashemunayim said, going to fight for its rights and we're going to believe in Hashem, even though it looks like a devastating situation. We're not going to give up. We're going to be strong. This is what we have to do. When it looks like it's all over, it's devastating, I can't go on anymore, Ramban says, when you hit rock bottom, then you're on the way up. You got to the bottom, bottom, up. Or as the Medrash says, mitoch choshech or. The or of Hanukkah came from the deepest and darkest um, Choshech, dark, that you could possibly imagine. And from that darkness came the light. So, if you're one of those people, like my friend who called me last night, or myself, as well, I know I get letters from uh, listeners that, Rabbi Javis, just say that it's good. And you know what? Some I just can't do it. I don't feel it. I don't feel its integrity. Yeah? And Hashem wants integrity. Right? You're not supposed to daven if you don't feel it. You learn that out from two very, very great um, Jews, Daniel and Yermia. Right? They stopped saying God will keep of a because they just didn't see it. I ain't no race of. They saw the base of Mingdus was being destroyed by non Jews. How can we say God will keep of a How can we say this is good? Yeah. Why are they called the Anche Knesset Hagadela? The Great Assembly. Great Assembly. Because they were Machsar Ateris Yosha. They returned the crown to the king. And they said, That's Aye, that's his Gadela, so that's the Rasa. That's Hashem's greatness, and that is his awesomeness. They said he keeps quiet even though this happened. They found a twist. They found a twist in the situation. And they were able to honestly from the depth of the heart, express that Hashem is God of human era, not because the base in base of ministry destroyed, because they found a new way to look at this. And that's what we have to do as well. If we can't thank Hashem for where we are, we have to change positions, right? The flip. And we have to look at it in a different way and try in that situation, right? And look very, very hard for some elements of good that we could dig out. And with great divine help, hopefully we'll merit to find that light in the darkness, to find it. Yeah? That little, little tiny drop. I remember I was in America this time of year, many years ago. One of my family members was in the hospital and I, um, I was staying nearby in the apartment. I had to walk. I was walking to the hospital and there was these big, big trees filled with lights. Lights and lights and lights going all around. Right, twenty meters up, Lamala Miyasra Mahama, Pasla Kalashitas, invalid according to all opinions. And below it there was a little little tiny Minerva electric plugged in. Also not culture according to all opinions. And I thought to myself, Wow, they have such big lights. The nations of the world, so much light. We have one tiny little light. And that's Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people. There's one tiny little light. Hashem left these small lights in the darkness that we should understand that it's not totally dark. As the Gemara tells us, one light could light up for a hundred people. Same light. It could bring, in the darkness, it could dispel 
It goes from being darkness to a great, great light. And this is what we have to do if you're suffering, like myself and my friend, with difficult situations. Yeah. And I was talking to someone yesterday, going through the most difficult situation you couldn't possibly imagine. This is a different person. Yeah. And I told him, listen, Hashem, it's not difficulties. It's a voda. It's a voda Hashem. Right? Hashem is giving you a voda. Hashem holds very, very highly of you to give you such difficult challenges. And you have to strengthen yourself and pick yourself up and find the light in the darkness. And that's Hanukkah. Hanukkah is finding that tiny drop of light, that one candle, right? Or now we're second in Hanukkah, two candles. That little, little candle burning, that little flask of oil that was left over, right? Shem left over. Shem always leaves over one flask, a little bit of light in the darkness, so we shouldn't be in complete darkness. So find the light. Search for the light in the darkness. And when you find it, you'll feel the greatest warmth and have the greatest light, that can be that illumination. You have to look for it. If you don't look for it, you won't find it. So Hashem Yisbarak should open our eyes to see the light that exists within the darkness, to see it and to feel it, and to be able to say, even when we can't get the words out of our mouth, but to reach deep in our hearts and to find that little light and the warmth and that we can be able to enable ourselves to say these very powerful words, Amen, Cain, Tiratzon.